day today. I'm going to share this experience because this experience is just not the one that's going on on our streets. It's just big. So, <clears throat> I've had a great day with my brother today. Beautiful day. I'm driving down driving down the road and I see about 15 men strong. Just It just seems like there's some vibe going on with them. Um, voices raised, kind of running one way, running back the other. Um, then I heard, like, I swear I heard the word knife, whatever, like, bam, parked up, come out, went straight over to them. Yeah, brothers, what's going on? Um, <clears throat> oh, man, I tell you, these brothers break it down to me that one of their boys just got moved to and the guy pulled out the knife on him so we could have been either hearing this in the news another man down the guy pulled the knife out on him <clears throat> went to rob him but he didn't know that he had friends and the friends must have turned around and see what was going on and one of them ran up and fly kicked this guy kicked him down to the floor mad thing I find out that this guy only knows him for like three days then after 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 chatting with them the guys told me like I've known this guy for three days three days and he's gone back and risked his life for this guy that he's known for three days <clears throat> trust me Man, the one on the road, you know, you got you got your boys out there you've known for years. And if a man pulls out a knife on you, they ain't running back in to be fly kicking nobody. They're, they're running off because they're thinking about their life. But this guy, uh, big up this you, right? He's gone back, fly kicked him, and obviously given his bridging time to, to do whatever he needs to do to get away. So he get away, but the guy who has had the knife pulled out on him, uh, he's had an asthma attack. And um, when I've driven up and come along, the the asthma attack has kicked in, and they're all trying to, they're all just trying to help him along. And these ladies that were there um, were, were said, we, you know, we, we need his help. And they, they borrowed an asthma pump. They got an asthma pump. Was helping this guy. So when I jumped out in my car, these guys were all panicking uh, and just like worried about their friend, but also worried about their self. Because, you know, if a man's pulled out a knife and you fly kicked him and you've gotten away, then he can come back with more men. So they're concerned about that as well. They're, they're youngers, in it? <clears throat> Um, I want the guy to know who's pulled out the knife that I'm coming for you I'm coming for you I ain't coming for you in that sense like you heard about I'm coming for you I'm coming for you because you need help this is a mental health issue you've got mental health issues and I'm coming to help you I'm going to find out where you live I'm going to find out where your mum's house is. I'm going to find out and I'm going to go there and I'm going to find you. Because you've gone and moved to a man that already recognises you. So I'm going to do my homework. But we need to show you youths that all this stepping up to man on the street, robbing them. I want to ask you a question. You youths that are robbing another youth. How is that changing your situation? How is that changing your situation? How's it ever going to change your situation? You're already broke. Living in your broke ass ends. And then you're going to rob a next man that's in the same situation that you're in. To try to do what? So really you're not even trying to better yourself. You're just loving evil. You're just loving creating a cycle of evil. Now, I want to talk to everyone about trauma. Every you that I just saw, I don't care how tough you think you are, you are traumatized 
when a man tries to kill your brethren on road and you're there witnessing it, it's trauma. So there was like some really little youngers there. There was olders, there was different ages, okay? But they can be traumatized. You know, who's going to deal with all that stuff going on in their head? The fear going on in their head. You know, what's when it happens to me? Then, listen, I've gone and gone and talked to the guy on the floor. Um, I've offered to take him home, uh, make sure he gets home all right, talk to his parents, whatever, talk to his family. Um, but he shared some stuff with me on the journey as well. And then we see like all of his boys are on the 144, you know, when we were driving up. So they all come off, off the bus and um, we all link up and we all hug up and they're so happy about their friend. <clears throat> they're happy about that their friend's alive. But, but one of the youths shared some stuff with me and I want to share it with you. He shared stuff with me about man just coming up to him random he's just on the road man's come up to him random one stuck a gun under his neck another one a knife to his side and just said take off your effing mask so he's pulled off the mask and they've slapped him in his face and just go oh you're lucky it's not you and moved on how do you think that's left this you he said when it happened he said what can I do because I was traumatized, I was like, I was speechless. This is what happening to our youths on the streets. This was happening to your youths. Do you think when you come home, every, or every youth is sharing with his parents how he's feeling, the trauma of what's happened to him? This is so deep. That's why it's so important for us to go out there and us to talk to these youths and us to go into their homes and us to do whatever is necessary to show these youths. When I told these youths that I care about every single one of you, like you could be my sons, because one of the youths when I came up and I said, um, listen, you know, where we, we you not going? Like, I need to know, you know, there's any, any revenge attacks. No, no, don't worry about us, we're all right. And I said, don't tell me to not to worry about you. You could all be my sons. So don't tell me don't worry about you. That is my job, to worry about you. I need to make sure that you guys are going home. No one ain't going to, you know, try to, to get revenge and do this and do that. Because that's how this whole cycle goes. I'm going to keep you posted on this one. Because I want to find this you that's done this. And I want to give him the, the help and support that he needs but I also want to make sure that he gets the consequences that he needs because we can't carry this on we, we, we all got to do something as a community we got to do something we got to speak up we got to let these guys know we want to help you but you got to face the consequences of your crimes you can't go around with knives threatening other little kids threatening younger little kids threatening each other to take a life it's a hot summer's day. Go out, walk through the forest, play football, play games, you know, check, holler at chicks, like, holler at girls, like, do whatever, bro. But coming out in a knife on a knife summer's day and you want to end somebody's life over what? What was you going to get? The change in his pocket, the mobile phone in his pocket. Really? Really?